speakers had been uh, speaking all these 11 days in our workshop and how these speakers enlightened our you know vision of mindset towards criticism uh, creative research uh, criti uh, creative writing and then research as well as academic writing so all these aspects i'm going to just brief you all uh, through the thematic concern of our workshop but first of all i would like to welcome whosoever is there so punctually on screen i'm i thankful i'm thankful to both of you and especially josna also she has been really sincerely contributing uh, you know in a very uh, invisible way uh, not only in office but also uh, with regard to this preparation of my work of workshop uh, she has uh, committed that she would be really uh, constant support for me. Um, so let's introduce first our institution once again, uh, because it's, uh, you know, the last week that we are heading to uh, our workshops uh, uh, continuity. And it is the 12th day, the 12th day is, uh, of uh, today of our workshop and indeed Bertha would continue with her uh, lesson on the same movie David Copperfield you know, with her pedagogic uh, preparations uh, to teach and learn English. Uh, actually she has prepared in view of uh, the learners uh, not only from the uh, uh, school or middle school or the higher school uh, but I think uh, when we look into the literary out of Charles Dickens novels and when we go into the readings of the Charles Dickens novel, we find that uh, they are uh, quite difficult uh, expressions and uh, you may say phrases which she has tried to bring into spotlight in her pedagogy of teaching and learning. And indeed the scholars have got some clues how to uh, improvise upon their uh, British English especially with, through this uh, book, which she has published online. So with the permission of, uh, of our honorable patron, chief patron, and also from the administration of Bhopal Nobles University, I take the privilege to introduce the organizers, to introduce the institution and uh, all those who are there Act, uh, so stimulatingly working to celebrate the centenary year that is 100 years of its foundation uh, in the name of Bhopal Noble Sansthan, which, is, which works under the aegis of uh, Vidya Pracharni Sabha. It's a trust. The trust name is Vidya Pracharni Sabha. And Bhopal Noble's university is one of its, uh, you may say, uh, edu educational unit, a very emerging popular unit uh, because it has been granted private uh, university status, not only by the Rajasthan state government, but it has also been acknowledged from the University Grants Commission, New Delhi, uh, as the uh, one of the higher education unit. Uh, good evening, Bertha. Actually, I was introducing my institution uh, be, uh, and consuming the uh, space, the space that is... Uh, you may say the interval that is being created because many uh, attendees have entered in and I have to start today earlier. So I'll just uh, finish with my whatever I was telling to my audience. Uh, there are still five minutes to start with you today. You are before time. Otherwise, you always enter at 6.30. So I thought to consume time. Um, Bhopal Nobles University, Udaipur. Collaborality, uh, uh, collaboratively has aligned in celebrations of the centenary year of the founding organization, Bhopal Noble Sansan, which is under the aegis of the trust known popularly as Vidya Pracharni Sabha Udaipur. I sincerely uh, pay my tribute to all the reverend veteran contributors of this old institution, which has been working under Vidya Pracharni Sabha. And I also acknowledge with privilege uh, this opportunity to welcome and honor the current uh, patrons of the Vidya Pracharni Sabha, uh, the Honorable Secretary, Professor Dr. Mahindra Singh Agriya, 
the Honorable Chairperson Shri Pradeep Kumar Singhji Singoli and the Managing Director Shri Mohabba Singhji Rathor uh, and the Finance Secretary formerly worked as Professor and Head of the Commerce College uh, Mohanlal Sukhari University Udaipur. He is Dr. Daryav Singhji Chundavat. I also humbly pay my evening greetings and uh, welcome them. Uh, welcome the uh, administration of Bhopal Nobles University, which is headed by Professor Naresh Bahadur Singh Saab, the Honorable President of this university, the Registrar Saab uh, Parvas Singh Ji Rathor. Uh, he's a, a erudite and very much friendly and cordial to uh, help us in coordinating all such functions. I also welcome and greet the more Honorable uh, Dean of the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities, uh, Professor Devendra Singh Sisodia. He's from the Department of Psychology. I also extend my hearty welcome and very much uh, supporting uh, line of my all organizing these uh, workshops since uh, I've been doing September. And it is a public relations officer of Bhopal Nobles University um, to president. And he is Dr. Kamal Singh Ji Ratho. And our honorable chairman of today's session, although she has been continuously uh, showing uh, her presence at, uh, and blessing us. So uh, still, I would like to mention her here that she is a special guest, Honorable Professor Jaya Chakravarti, formerly Dean of Humanities and the head of the English Department of Rajasthan University. She has been so reciprocal to all my insights and upcoming ventures and ideas that she has consented to take care of the online workshop proceedings as the Honorable uh, panel uh, chair of the panel or sessions that we are holding. I would like to greet with wholehearted respect the honorable uh, external member of the board of studies, Professor Sharad Shivasa. He was formerly the head of the Department of English in the University College of Social Science and Humanities, Mohan Lal Sukhari University. He was also a supervisor of most of the faculty belonging to the Department of English of Bhopal Nobles University. He's a mentor, he's a philosopher, guide, friend for all the faculty members that are working in the English Department of uh, Bhopal Nobles University. So I welcome him and greet him. Uh, it's real great credit that uh, the professor who has been mentoring and guiding um, and his scholars are in the uh, conducting and holding the department so powerfully. Our inaugural um, Mm, the keynote speaker, when we started the workshop on 12th February, our inaugural keynote speaker was Professor Bala Subramaniam from Tamil Nadu. He spoke about uh, John Keats' poems uh, uh, and he dealt in the text and context of John Keats' uh, creativity and he was very much contra uh, whole, uh, discussing about the contemporary relevance of John Keats with regard to the uh, mindscape of uh, young learners and the graduate learners, uh, how uh, John Keats has been so influential in um, among the youth of his times and till date he has been so popularly learned and taught in the uh, syllabi of uh, English literature of Indian universities. And then we had uh, another second day of the workshop in which Konal Kredam uh, from Ireland uh, belonging to Dublin uh, gave us the lecture on the creativity is a magic. He told that it's a form uh, which one, uh, in which one has to be very fearless in expression and uh, one should not be afraid of being ridiculed. And it's a very challenging job when one attends uh, Konal Creedon's uh, uh, work, uh, day of lecture because he was totally down to earth. He said that all his sources of his inspiration was the history of Ireland and uh, the common local um, plethora of uh, experiences that he gathered from his day-to-day -day life that were the uh, source of his creativity. Then we had a third day of our uh, workshop in which uh, we had um, uh, Professor Bhaktai. Uh, she initiated uh, with some different kind of you know strategy to get hold of this workshop uh, and she has been assigned eight hours to conduct her lectures and uh, only three hours or four three hours or four hours are left out of all her uh, allotted timings so i will not deal uh, or take much of her time because it's already six 
at my end and uh, so i just now welcome you all and professor jaya uh, i would request you to please uh, once again uh, welcome our dear honorable uh, uh, guest speaker professor berta uh, good evening everyone good evening professor berta so nice to see you once again yesterday we had a very good lecture on the language of cinema and we could link up with what you have been teaching us so it is always a pleasure that the more we learn the more knowledge we acquire and uh, especially this morning i was talking to jeshwi and i was telling her that berta's approach is making us also aware of the nuances of grammar that are there in david copperfield honestly speaking i have never studied the novel from this perspective so it's a great pleasure and i welcome you to this workshop once again and we look forward to viewing clippings of david copperfield and to having those lovely interactive academically fruitful sessions with you thank you very much uh, good morning Namaste, Namaskar. Namaskar, uh, Namaskar. I, I'm very happy to be here and I welcome you to my workshop. Uh, so last uh, time we uh, saw the movie, the third part, and now it's our turn to read, to go to the reading, se the reading section. So I will share screen with you. to see my book. Can you see? Uh, uh, yes, we are. Yes, this is the, a picture of the third part. So, uh, the moment where David is going to Yarmouth. And this is Mr. Barkis, Pegotti, and here is David's mother and Mr. Merston. Well, I need, uh, uh, let's see how many characters we have. We have Mr. Pegotti. I need uh, one student or teacher who is going to take the role of Mr. Pegotti. Another one, Pegotti. Another one, David. Um, David. Little Emily. Uh, uh, Clara. And Mr. Merston. Mr. Yes, so six six students. Uh, madam, I would like to play one of the roles. Which one uh, would I uh, well, ask? Uh, yes, uh, you are. Um, tell me your name. Dr. Deepa Rastogi. Deepa. 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 Yes, you, Deepa, will take the role of uh, Pegoti. Okay, ma'am. Pegoti. Yes. <clears throat> Who wants to be, uh, I, I also need uh, the narrator, or perhaps I will be the narrator. So I will going to read uh, the parts which are in slant letters here. Uh, who is going to be David? Ma'am, I will do, uh, Dr. Deepika Sahu. Deepika, excellent. You are going to be David. Uh, who's going to be Mr. Pegotti? For example, Kumar. Kumar is there. Kumar is a, a male student. Yes, oh, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Ah, yes. yes you ah, can yes. take the role or play the role. Or play the role of Mr. Pegotti. Mr. Pegotti. Okay. Yes. Well, I need later on I another need later character. On another character. 
eh, to play the role of play the Mr. Role Merston. Of Mr. Merston. Who wants to be? Eh, Prerona eh, Bosch. Eh, Bosch. Would you like to play the role of Mr. Merston? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. You are going to be Mr. Merston. Well, so the narrator is myself, so I'm going to read. <laughs> Once in Yarmouth, David arrives at Mr. Pegotti's old house. Yes, well, uh, Mr. Pegotti, who is Mr. Pegotti? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Master Copper Hill. I'm Daniel Pegotti. Glad to see you, sir. You will find us rough, sir, but you will find us ready. This is little Emily, sir. Emily, say, how do you do, Master Copperfield? Little Emily gets embarrassed and goes into the boathouse. Into the boathouse. Sister, how are you, Les? Address is Pegotti. Pegotti. Hugs her brother lovingly. All right, my All love. Right, my love. Come, on, Come on, Davy. They enter the boat house. And then, and then they are eating at the table. Mr. Pegotti. Mr. Pegotti. Did, uh, did you did you son the name of Ham? Because you lived in the Noah's Ark. Oh no, sir. His father gave him that name. But I thought you his father's father. My brother Joe was his father. Dead. Mr. Pegotti. Who is Mr. Pegotti? Rounded. Rounded, yes. But little Emily, she's your daughter, she's isn't, daughter she? isn't she? No, sure. My brother in law, Tom, was her father. Not dead, Mr. Pegotti. Mr. Pegotti. No, sir. I am Bessler. A bachelor. Then who's this? Then points to the woman with an apron who immediately begins to cry. Who immediately begins to cry. Yes, now is Pegotti's turn. Pegotti's turn. Pegotti. Pegotti. It's time to bed, Mark Davy. Stands up Stands from, up the, from table the table and takes and takes to his room. To his room. There, there, old girl. Well, who is Pegotti? Who is Pegotti? The best the man to bed with you now. Good night. Good night. She kisses David. Uh, but you didn't read it that part. Um, Deepa. Her okay. name okay. is Gamich. Gamich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I missed one dialogue. I missed one dialogue. <laughs> Tucks David's blanket, David's blanket in his bed. In his bed. And explains. and explains. Her name is Mrs. Gummidge. Mrs. Gummidge. Her man, man and, Daniel and Daniel were partners, were partners in, a boat. in a boat. Old Gummidge died. Gummidge died. And he left her he left very, her poor. very poor. Sit down to current, to current like, ham. like ham. And little Emily, little Emily when they were orphaned. He yes. must be a very good man, I should think. The best of man. Best of man. To bed with you now. Good night. Good night. Good night. She, good night. Kisses good David. David. she wants to give she David another, piece, another of piece of advice. Davy. Davy. 
Yes, Peggy. My brother Daniel. He don't like that goodness and generosity of his spoken, of not by anybody, not in his hearing. I will mention it. Don't, don't. It makes him swear something terrible. Something terrible. He'll do. He'll do. Next morning, Next morning, little Emily and baby, and baby, go running to the sea. To the sea. Yes. Who is little Emily? Little Emily. Um, I will read. Uh, come, on, come on, come on, come on. They stop running, they stop running somewhere, somewhere on the beach. On the beach. Sometimes, Sometimes at night, Sometimes, when a storm's night, blown, a storm I wake blown. and I think, and I, think I, hear I hear Uncle Daniel and him crying out for help. for help. Does it make you remember your father? I have never known him. That's like me. But you have a mother, haven't you? I lost my mother too. Your father was a gentleman and mine's a fisherman like Uncle Daniel. Peggy said I should never mention what a good man is. Good. If I, am, if I was ever to be a lady, I would give him a sky blue coat with diamond buttons, a red duffel, Waistcoat, a cooked hat, and gold watch, and a box of money. Would you like to be a lady, Emily? Yes, very much. Emily, wait. She turns round and round, holding her shawl with stretched out arms as if she were a lady, while David looks at her thoughtfully. I'm sure. I loved her with greatest tenderness and purity that can enter into an even noblest love of a later time of life. The day is quoted by us as if time himself had not grown up, but was a child too, and always at play. And dear Peggotty, I suppose it was because she saw us so happy and would not spoil it that she never did carry out the commission my mother had instructed to her. It was only when we were approaching the very gate of the house that at last she told me. Well, who is David? Uh, um, David is the uh, Okay, ma'am. I was reading uh, Little Emily. I'll read it again. Uh, oh, okay. This too. Getting back home in Mr. Barkis' coach. As they are about to arrive at the rook rookery, Mr. Barkis, sound your horn, please. Sound your horn, and she will come to the gate. The horn is sounded. Where is she? Where is she? Why, why hasn't she come out? Pagati, where is she, Pagati? Why hasn't Wait. she come out? Wait, Master David, and I'll tell you something. Wow, I'm where is she? She is not dead. Tells him the truth about David's mother. David, of course, she's not. Oh, bless the boy. No, David, I should have told you something before, but I couldn't bring my mind to it. What do you think? You have got a pa, a new one. When he enters the house, he runs to his mother's arm. Mama. Well, um, nobody is Clara. Clara hugs her son tenderly. Davy. Uh, and uh, Mr. Marston. Mr. Marston, uh, I I don't and I don't remember if I was going to play the role of Mr. Marston. <laughs> Standing well. in front of the bookcase with a book in his hand, he turns round, closes the book, and says in a domineering way. Clara, my dear, control yourself. Well, you may kiss your mother, David. Always control yourself. Well, old Davy, how would you do? 
He stretches his arm, but Davy does not shake hands with him. Davy runs upstairs to see his room. He is disappointed to find his room being pointed in dull dark colors. His mother runs after him. Clara explains the situation. Davy, Mr. Mudstone's sister will live with us. Davy, she has to have this room while you are to have a new room. My child. Who's David? But why? Deepika. Come with ah, me. Yeah. Come with me, Davy. Clara takes her son to his new room at the attic. Mr. Mudstone follows them. Clara kisses Davy. Mr. Mudstone re, re Clara, what is this? Clara, my love, have you forgotten? Firmness, my dear. Clara excuses herself. I'm sorry, Edward. I have meant to be very good. I'm so uncomfortable. Well, Edward is Mr. Merston. Edward, go you below, my dear David, and I will be down in a moment. He kisses Clara's hand, closes the door of David's room, then sits beside David and asks him, David, if I have an obstinate horse or dog, what had you think I do? Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. I beat him, I make him wince and smart, and I had said to himself, I have conquered that fellow. If it cost him all the blood he has, I'll do it. David looks at him, terrified. Remembers why he is writing his book. A few days later, she came, Miss Jane Murdstone. Yes, excellent. You read it excellently. Now, we are going to read the footnotes because they are important. Let's begin with the beginning. Ah. Here we have, a, let's see, for example, number 55, Mr. Pegot says, Master. And I wrote here, that master is an archaic term and is the title given to a boy before his, his surname or first name. It's just like a salutation for a younger boy. And exactly, yes, to show respect. The pronunciation is master. Then Little Emily is a quotation from the original book, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. And the word little is written in lowercase letters because it is an adjective that is not part of Emily's name. Because I thought that little Emily was his, her name, but it wasn't. Uh, Emily was her name. And I, I wanted to know why it was written in lowercase letters. And it little. was because it is an, an adjective, not part of, his, of her name. Then okay. when Mr. Pegotti greets, greets uh, his uh, sister, Pegotti, he says, Lass. And Lass is, uh, uh, is, is a, uh, an informal te a term uh, if for a girl a or a young woman. Yes, what are you going to say? Uh, Ma'am, actually, uh, Lass is the feminine gender of lad. Uh, and in Hindi, it, it was taught to us like Chokri, a uh, young, uh, bubbly girl. Ah, yes, excellent. But perhaps many students don't know what is LAS. And it is not in the glossary section. That's why I, I'm putting it in the footnotes. So it is used to address to someone familiar or friendly. And the pronunciation is LAS. LAS. Yes. Then... Um, David name, names uh, the Noah's Ark. And the Noah's Ark in the Old Testament, Ham is one of the Noah's three sons, along with Shen and Hafez. Uh, let's see what David says here in uh, footnote 58. Uh, where is 58? <laughs> 
here. Did you give your son the name of Ham because you lived in the Noah's Ark? And I explain what is the Noah's Ark in the footnote. Now, you have here, for example, Mr. Pegotti answers, no, sir, his father gave him that name. And instead of using Gabe, he uses Keith. And I'm going to tell you why in the footnote. Uh, his father give quotation from the original book, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. It should be written Gabe. And he, he, he speaks like this, like this, because uh, he is uneducated. So he uh, makes a mixture of tenses. Instead of saying Gabe, he uh, says Gabe. And the other one here is um, number 16, you, his father. David says, I thought you, his father, here. But I thought you, his father. So there is here, there is something missing here, and it is the verb to be. But I thought you are your father or you are his father. No, there is an elision, an elision of the verb to be. That happens in oral language. And I explain why it is not there, the verb to be. Yes. Ellip ellipses of the verb to be, where, are, have been. The complete version would be you are or you were or you have been his father. And let's look the other uh, footnotes in the following page. Ah, here, um, Mr. Mr. Pegotti says drowned, and this this is a quotation from the original book, but it is an invented word. This word doesn't exist. The author uh, Dickens wants to emphasize the fact that Mr. Pegotti's brother died at sea. And the correct alternative uh, should be drowned. Hmm? When you die, die at sea, your uh, water comes into your lungs and you cannot breathe anymore. So this is a combination of two words, on round, the action of drowned, and dead. So this is for emphasis, for emphasis uh, to, to the person who is dead. Then let's see number 62. Number 62 says, haven't you any children then? Here, uh, God is missing. Haven't, haven't you got any children? Would be the correct version. And let's see what I found. In some English dialects, the verb have is used as an auxiliary verb with the meaning of possession. And it is also a trait of the English spoken in the 19th century. So they didn't use got there, they use have as an auxiliary. And uh, it, it is not very common or not very, uh, yes, it is used have. Uh, but he, uh, now, in nowadays, nowadays language, we say, for example, uh, the verb have, meaning possession, but we use the auxiliary do, does to make questions. Do you have a dog? Do you have a car? No, have you a dog? No. Later uh, in, the, in the 19th century, they used have as an auxiliary. Only have, not have got, only have. And there, I'm a bachelor. He says bachelor, not bachelor, bachelor. And this is another quotation from original book. And this word doesn't exist too. Uh, Mr. Pegotti pronounced it incorrectly. He should have said, I am a bachelor, not a bachelor. <laughs> and number 16, he says he don't like. No, this is Pegotti says this. He don't like. Instead of saying he doesn't like, she says he don't like, and Pegotti speaks, speaks incorrectly due to her lower social class, so she is uneducated, and she would have said she does uh, he doesn't like instead of he don't like. 
and this one he's spoken. Let's see uh, number 16, 65 here. My brother Daniel don't like that goodness and generosity of his spoken of. Not anybody, not by anybody, not in his hearing. So here you have a passive construction. And this passive construction, let's read. Uh, uh, the original sentence uh, in the active voice, the subject, uh, uh, let's read. Passive construction with a subject that is the indirect object of the sentence in active voice. In some languages, like for example Spanish, it is not possible to turn active voice sentences with indirect objects into passive voice. Although this grammar topic is explained in the grammar section of part three, remit to David Copperfield part six for further details because in part six of chapter six of the book is explained the passive voice completely. So here, he's spoken. This is a, a, a passive construction using the indirect object. So to form the passive voice, you use the object of the active voice. For example, a carpenter made a table. A table is made by the carpenter. But uh, the carpenter made a, a, a table for you. You were made a table for uh, by the carpenter. So in Spanish, you cannot put the indirect object as the object of the passive sentence. This is this is a bit confusing, but we will explain that in chapter six. Well, let's continue with the other uh, footnotes here. Ah, here, what? David can complete the word why or what or where, when, because of a strong emotion and also because he thinks his mother is dead. He's almost uh, beginning to cry. When he is arriving home and uh, Mr. Barkis is, is horning uh, his horn, to, to give advice or to, to uh, arise attention to his mother. And uh, he wants his, uh, his mother to come to the front door or to the door to welcome him, but she can't, she is not there. And she he is thinking that her, uh, his mother is dead. Uh, and here 67 and 67 bees, she's to have and you're to have. This is the verb to be expressing obligation, rarely used. And you have to use verb to be plus a uh, to verb. Let's see uh, here. David, she's to have this room while you're to have a new room. Hmm? Instead of using you have to have, they use the verb to be here. Well, uh, I think there's no more one uh, footnotes here. So, uh, who can read the glossary? Um, <coughs> yes, ma'am. You, you are Deepa? Yeah, I am Deepa. Okay, so read uh, the glossary. Okay, uh, here the gl glossary start. To set down to current. And the expression is, it is an irregular verb that denotes past and past participle set. That means to leave someone adrift with no money or possession. Here is the another pronunciation. Dejar a la dariva. Asu suerte. And here is the usage of uh, the phrase in, in sentence. Peter got out of jail and as he didn't have a job, he was set down to current. That means he was almost uh, bankrupt with no possession, no support, no clue. I believe it's clear to set down to current. The next one is duffel. 
it's a noun uncountable thick wool fabric lona lena that duffel coat is very warm and has a has got a hood so uh, i would like to say that duffel means a uh, thick uh, and warm fabric like wool that uh, can be put on during winter season exactly yes you can provide the hindi uh, term han ji okay set down to current means Uh, इसका अर्थ होगा कि कोई भी पैसा धेला पास में नहीं होना और बिना किसी सहायता के असहाय बीच में मझधार में छूट जाना कंगाल होना कंगाल होना ओके दिस इज ग्रेट डफल मींस एक गरम कपड़ा जो ऊन का बना हुआ होता है और जिसमें हुड होता है ऐसा कोट जिसमें पीछे कैप लगी हो उसको हम डफल कहेंगे जो सर्दियों में फटना जाता है The next one is cocked hat. It's a phrase and also a noun. Historical man's hat with turn up brim. Sombre sombrero bicornio, tricornio. In the year eighteen hundred, officers of the army and navy wore cocked hats as part of their uniforms. ये एक अलग प्रकार की हैट होती है जो आगे से झुकी हुई होती है इसमें एक टर्न होता है मतलब आगे से झुकी रहती है ये और ब्रिम होते हैं उसके किनारे दीपा हाँ जी काफी देवानंद जैसा हैट है पहले देवानंद के पुराने पिक्चरों में देवानंद इस तरह के हैट पहनते थे दीदी वाटर वाटर को जैसा आपने बोला ना बिल्कुल यही मेरे मन में इमेजिनेशन आया था वो जैसे हैट उठा उठा के ऐसे सेल्यूटेशन देता था ना हैट को नीचे करता था बिल्कुल वैसा ही कहते हैं इसको ओके okay. हाँ जी वो एक तरह से काव बॉय जैसी इमेज हो गई थी उसकी हाँ, हाँ, बिल्कुल ठीक है दिस इज सो वंडरफुल कुक्ड हैट ओके द नेक्स्ट वन इज हैट हाँ जी इट्स कॉक्ड हैट टू स्पोर्ट्स रेगुलर वर्ब इन ट्रांसिटिव लिटरेरी टू अम्यूज वन सेल्फ विथ सम प्लेजेंट पास टाइम प्ले मतलब खेलना जुगर डाइवर्टिसाइज डाइवर्टाइटिस हाउ क्रूएल ही इज टू स्पोर्ट विद माई इमोशन इन दिस वे किसी की भावनाओं के साथ खिलवाड़ करना फिफ्थ वन इज आई कुड नॉट और कैन नॉट ब्रिंग माई माइंड टू इट एक्सप्रेशन आई कुड और कैन नॉट डिसाइड आई डेयर नॉट नो पॉडर डेसीडर्स नो At reverse, she couldn't tell him the truth. She couldn't bring her mind to it. I could not or cannot bring my mind to it. अर्थात इस विचार को प्रकट नहीं कर सकी मेरे दिमाग में नहीं आया ये मन का ना मानना हाँ जी उसको उसके लिए अप्रूवल ना देना उसके लिए सहमति ना देना और उसको एक्सप्रेस ना करना नंबर सिक्स टू वेंस रेगुलर वर्ब इन ट्रांसिटिव दैट मीन्स टू फिंच और रिकॉयल Hesar on gesto of dollar winced when she described the accident to feel embarrassed avangor zas appendress appenars ruth winced with embarrassment as she admitted that she had lied ruth ko bahut zyada sharmindagi ka samna karna pada jab usne ye swikar kar liya ki usne jhoot bola hai iska exactly mean hoga sharmindagi uthana wince the uh, next one number 7 to smart regular verb in transitive to be a cause of sharp stinging pain dollar the cut on his arm still smarted to suffer sharply as from wounded feelings astray messer he was still smarting from the insults kisi dhar dar cheez se chot lag jana jo ghav ban jaye aur usme lagatar pain hona nerves se jo bleeding hoti hai uski wajah se lagatar dard ki lehron se दो चार होते रहना उनका सामना करना टू कट ऑन इज आर्म स्टिल स्मार्टेड ये जरूरी नहीं है कि धार धार चीज से स्मार्टिंग फ्रॉम ऑल्सो एन इंसल्ट ही so it's both a verbal and yeah, a non verbal yeah. 
या एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली आई एम आई एम कम्प्लीटली एग्री विद यू जया दीदी रेगुलर वर्ब भी है एंड इन इन ट्रांसिटिव भी है तो वी कैन यूज इन बोथ ऑफ द टर्म्स exactly well so make a list of these expressions and words uh, because we are going to use them in the sentences filling the blanks so to sit down to correct excuse me ma'am yes uh, i would yes. like to uh, attract your attention number 4 to sport yes, yes. to sport ha uh, to amuse one self with some pleasant past time that is pleasant here yes but yes it is pleasant but the example but the example here how cruel he is ah, to no, sport yes. with my emotions in this way yes here, this is metaphorical also also metaphorical yes yes because you you were playing you were having fun there is a ha ha symbolic fun i was, I was uh, uh, I was, I was not pleased, not pleased, but you were playing with my emotions. You were okay, having okay, fun. Okay. Having fun. Okay, I okay, was, I got I it was uh, hurt. Hurt. I was hurt. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, do the list. To sport, I could not or cannot bring my mind to it. To wins, and to smart. and let's do the sentences after his operation david guns mm -hmm, very much because he got infected what do you think it goes here smarted he excellent smarted number 2 oh look what a tender sight those two kittens are with the balls of wool duffel and uh, what what no, no. what sporting sporting yes because this is a synonym to play but is literary literary it is not uh, informal play is informal but sport you will find sport in literature not in everyday conversations i as the nurse injected the serum into my arm I I made a gesture. I winced. I winced. Excellent. Yes. If it is too cold, you can wear your new <laughs> coat. Duffel. Duffel. Excellent. When my father lost his job, we were <laughs> until finally he got a new one. We were set down to current. Excellent. Yes. Henry, where are you going on holidays this year? Have you decided yet? Simon, no, I can't. <laughs> I cannot I... bring my mind to it. Excellent. I cannot bring my mind to it. Yes, and the last one. American colony colonies settlers used to wear <laughs> where they were they were fashion at that time cocked hat cocked hat cocked hat let's hats. put it into the plural because we are we are talking, we're talking about, about settlers plural yes uh, well now we are going to we are going to skip some activities and i want you to to go here here at the movie do you remember that when david arrived home and greeted uh, his mom his mom then he ran he ran directly directly to his room to his room and do you remember do you what remember he what he find he find there someone was painting his room room was being painted in dull colors and uh, mr murchton's sister was arriving so his mother comes up and explains the situation that she is coming to live with them and she has been given this room and he has been shifted to a new one excellent yes so 
So I go, I'm going to play, I'm going a, to play a, 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 beat, a beat, and then, and then I am going to stop. Going to stop uh, and you are going to provide. provide you are going to, are going to, to play roles. Play roles. One person will be David, and the another person will be Clara, his mother. So let's 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 see. But I'm sorry, I am going to going to to put down uh, the the sorry the volume. the volume. But I can't because I am clicking here. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Well. Let's let's uh, see, and then you are going to provide. In other words, not in the words of the characters. In your your own words. Mr. Madstone's sister is still living with us. She used to have this room. Well, you ought to have a new room. But why? Come with me. So, uh, for example, for David example, arrived David at, arrived his, at room. his room. And what uh, would she say? Uh, David is quite surprised. Uh, David is quite sur uh, not surprised. I should say shocked. Not surprised. I should say shocked. David is totally shocked to see the dark room of his uh, dark color of his room. And his mother convinced him that, my dear child, you will get a new room. Let's go to the new room. Yes, but I, I need um, a person who takes the role of David. What would David say in that situation? that situation had be had he been a today's youngster he would he would have said what is all this happening yes what happened to my room uh, our uh, the, the 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 child of next generation can, can also say like that how dare you to you change the color of my room without my permission who the hell are you to do that all yes <laughs> <laughs> yes, excellent. excellent. <laughs> and, and his mother, his mother comes and say, what, what, say what, what, what could she say to his son, his son, to her son, to her son? Uh, you know, ma'am. You know, ma'am. As a, I'm also a mother, I'm also and mother, I also feel scared uh, at the at the awkward reactions of my children. Of my children. So, so we feel, we feel uh, something uh, something quiz in ourselves, in and, ourselves we, and we. we we play. We play. Don't, don't get adamant. Like uh, like uh, old time old mothers. Time mothers. Uh, uh, I believe that I would, that in I such condition I would say. I would say. Uh, uh, don't you like don't it? You like it? Yes, perhaps. Honey, Honey or uh, or uh, we'll arrange we'll a arrange better, room, a for better room for you. Please don't Please get annoyed. Get annoyed. That's, yes, it. that's it. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We are going to give you okay. another okay. Okay. What am I wishing to do here? What would you say? Uh, can, can you repeat? Yo, yeah. Yo, yeah. I said that, but what would you say? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if I if I am if David's I am, mother, I calm him down and say, uh, David, don't you worry. This was not your room anymore. You have another room. We have prepared another room for you. It will be very nice. Let's see. Come on. Come upstairs. Come upstairs. Perhaps he could Ma'am, ma'am, I don't think you would say such a word. Because here yeah, David's mother is psychologically pressured. She is yes, scared yes, of. Uh, in Some people would also be a bit defensive towards our side and uh, tell him that we've got a new room for you. Kind of giving him a lollipop. Yes, she has to convince, she has to convince him, him that she's that she not taking a side, that she that will have another room. Another room. A surprise for him. Yes, excellent. So this is the way you have to 
uh, work with your students. Just, you have to put the one scene, one scene and assign a character to one student and a character and another student, and they have to interact and to think what uh, expressions or what would they say in these situations. So I'm going to uh, share uh, uh, again my book to see what is missing here. Uh, we have to answer the questions. Uh, so, why did Mr. Pegotti help and host little Emily and Ham in his houseboat? Because they were remember? his brother's children and they did not have parents, so he looked after them. Exactly, yes. And he was he, uh, the, their aunt, their uncle. So he wanted to take responsibility on them. He wanted to give them a, they were family. a house and, and, <laughs> and raise them. Yes, exactly. And who is Mrs. Gamage? Why did Mr. Pegotti help her? Do you remember who is Miss, Mrs. Gamage? The, the old no, lady. The lady whose husband had died and whose husband was a partner and Mrs. Gummidge was a given shelter by Peggy. By Mr. Peggy. Mr. Peggy. Excellent. And uh, more or less, how old is she? Can you imagine or can you guess? 25. How no, old she is would she? She would be around the age of Mr. Peggotty or a couple of years younger to Peggotty. Yes, more or less 60. Yes. Or less than 60. Yes, excellent. Mm -hmm. And he looks very ill or perhaps uh, uh, taken aside. That's why he wanted to help her and he is uh, letting her live in his house. Excellent. Number three, what did David do with Emily when he was with her on the beach? Playing. Yes, they were playing, they were having fun, they were running through the shore. Yes, excellent. And uh, why? Num number four, who is a bachelor and what is he like? Someone who doesn't have a wife, who's not married. Here, Mr. Pegotti is the bachelor, I think. Yes, Mr. Pegotti is the bachelor because, the bachelor he, because he, he doesn't have a wife. Why, wife. Why is it used the bachelor, use word? The bachelor word rather as spinster? Oh, uh, mom, spinster is feminine, 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 feminine. 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 Yes, Pinter is for uh, female. Uh, female. And bachelor for male. Bachelor for male. Yes. And uh, I think you have already decided in, in, in last class. So we are going to we are going to continue with number five. Why didn't Pegotti tell David that his mother remarried someone? Remarried someone? Uh, because she because observed she that uh, David that can David feel, bad. Can feel bad as he is growing the child. child. He can uh, 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 assume, assume the unwanted things. She, yes. uh, she, she was happy she to was see happy David happy, happy after a long time, a long time. and she did and not she want did to not spoil, want his spoil his mood. Excellent. And he could not bring to tell the news because it would get him upset and it would ruin all his holidays that he's going to be spending. Yes, excellent. Yes. Uh, number six. What is Mr. Merston? Like, bueno, this, this one was already answered last class. But, but the second part of the question is how did he show his firmness? Uh, I believe that he was a very cunning and adamant. And adamant. Heartless, heartless, strict, strict man, man. and he showed and his he firmness showed his by, by 
confirming on his decision treating little david very harshly and by not changing his his pre uh, decided decisions by threatening him also yes threatening he did not want to uh, clara to uh, to hug his son to kiss his son to give affection to his son that's why he uh, show firmness Uh, never, uh, number seven. Why can't David sleep in his former room? Right. We, we already Because discussed. Because the room was allotted to Marston's sister. Yes, <laughs> this room was assigned to Miss uh, <laughs> Marston. Okay. Well, we did the speaking activity, and we are going to skip the listening activity because you know how it works. We have done. In other chapters, and let's go to the true or false and the choose the better uh, option because these are for lower level uh, students. So number one, little Emily and Ham are cousins, siblings, or friends. <laughs> little Emily and Ham are cousins. friends. They are friends. No, they are cousins. Oh. <coughs> cousins. Acha, oh yes, little Emily and Ham are cousins. Yeah, yeah, yes. They are cousins. Sorry. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Pegotti is uh, their uncle, because Mr. Pegotti has two brothers. One was um, Emily's father, and the other one was Hans' father. Yes. Number two, David. Mm -hmm, Emily. Uh, David hated Emily, was in love with Emily, or had no feelings towards Emily. Was in love David was in love with Emily. Excellent. Yeah, that's love yes. Ham's father, Emily's father, and Mrs. Gamich's husband died at sea drowned by natural causes or by, by suicide. At sea, at sea drowned. drowned. At sea drowned. Excellent. Clara Pegotti is Mr. Daniels Pegotti's wife, sister, or cousin? Sister. Yes, sister. Uh, when David arrives home from Yarmouth, he finds that his toys were all lost, his bedroom is being redecorated, or his mother did not live in the house anymore. His bedroom is being redecorated. Excellent. Yes. Number six. Pegotti was supposed to be Mr. Copperfield's ambassador and tell David about, mm -hmm, uh, but she didn't, about his mother's death, about his mother's marriage, or about his mother's living. His mother's, his mother's marriage. marriage. Excellent. If little Emily were ever to be a lady, she would buy her uncle Daniel a new uh, boat, a new boat, coach. a coach. A gold watch and a box of money. A new a boat. Watch and a box of money. Yes, this one. See, a gold watch and a box of money. Okay. Yes. She also said a hot cat, um, a cocked hat. Cocked hat. Yes. And a waistcoat with uh, diamond buttons, but it's what's it was too long to to write there, all that. Well, and now the true or false activity. Uh, one, little Emily is Mr. Pegotti's daughter. False. False. It is Mr. Pegotti's niece. Uh, both Emily's father and Hans' father died from drowning in sea. True. 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 Mrs. Uh, yes. Uh, it's written, little Emily is Mr. Peggy's daughter. Uh, Mr. Peggy's brother would also be called Mr. Peggy. No, no, no. Little Emily is not uh, his daughter. Is his niece? Nee, This is false. She is, she is his yeah, niece. So but Mr. Peggy's brother would also have the same last name. 
No, no, no. Let me explain. No. But now let me explain. You see, Navni, his brother was Mr. Peggotty. Okay. Yes. But we are in this context. We are talking of Mr. Peggotty. The number of the baby is invalid. Okay. So yes, that sir. is why. Anji, वो भी हम invalid आ रहा है. ये सब ये सब मैंने photo भी भेजा है. Deepa, mute yourself. Deepa, mute yourself. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So she is the niece of Mr. Peggotty. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Well, here number three, Mrs. Gamich's husband and Mr. Peggotty were not were not partners. True. True or false? False. They were partners. Okay. Yes. Little Emily and David played together at the seashore. True. 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 David's mother comes out of the house and runs to meet her son when she hears Mr. Barkey's horn. False. False. She doesn't come out from the house. Yes. Number six. Mr. Merston's sister will live at Clara's house in David's room. True. 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 Yes. And the last one. Mr. Merston told David that if if he had an obstinate dog, he would be kind to it. False. False. Because he said that he would beat him. Treat the same. Wins, uh, wins and smart. Yes. Excellent. Well, the grammar section here is uh, do, did, do, or does for emphasis. So, who wants to read? Uh, Ma'am, may I read? Yes, yes, of course. Grammar section, did, do, does, or for emphasis. David wrote, Peggy Nawa did carry out the commission my mother had entrusted to her. This state sentence is in the past and has got the structure. Did plus a positive verb in the base form. This is an exception to the rule of forming the simple past tense and it is used to give emphasis to the action the common way of expressing a sentence in the past with an affirmative verb would be peggy never carried out the commission the same situation happens with affirmative sentences in the simple present tense that be a do or does plus verb in the base form they carry the auxiliary before the main verb to give emphasis for example we do want to help you the ordinary way without emphasis would be we want to help you diego does work hard the ordinary way without emphasis would be diego works hard but i really do love you bobby sorry baby the ordinary way without emphasis would be but i really love you baby in speech the auxiliary do or does or did for emphasis is pronounced stressed yes so if you want to carry emphasis to something you put the auxiliary the auxiliary verb do did or does yes uh, next to the verb so perhaps you can you would like to do these exercises there are only six okay yes my parents missed their yeah. flight my parents with emphasis did miss. did miss their flight yes did miss with without ed with the base form did miss excellent my best buddy six. sings in a choir my best buddy does sing does sing excellent does sing in a choir you got into serious trouble you do go get into serious trouble did did, did, get, get, did get did get into serious trouble excellent okay uh, you know a lot about pets you do know oh you did you did know a lot about pets you have to put do or d or das okay. and the base four. The d plus four first. Yes. Number five. She thinks you are grown. She does think. 
Yes, you are wrong. Excellent. And your brother needs a new satchel. Your, your brother, brother does need a new satchel. Excellent. Well, I think we are on time. And we can uh, watch the, well, this is the construct, the, the passive constructive. We can skip and the conditional sentence type two because appears. Uh, I explain it and then you have to do exercises. And then comes the following chapter. And I think we are going to watch uh, the fourth part of the movie tomorrow because we, we run out of time. Um, this is well. This is the end of my intervention here. I don't know if I have some minutes left, or we have to close now. Ma'am, honorable chair, yes. please. Do ah. you allow us, honorable chairperson? Please. I think I think Bata, you could show us a little bit of the clipping so that tomorrow we can also come a little prepared. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, let's look for it. I remember when she paid the coachman, she took her money out of a hard steel. Are you listening okay? And are you watching the movie okay? Can, can you see the movie? Yes, yes. Yes, ah, ma'am. Okay. I'll play it. Little purse. She kept her purse in a very jail of a bag, which hung upon her arm by heavy chains and shut up like a bite. I've never seen before. Have I ever seen since such a metallic lady as Jane Murdstone? Dear Jane, welcome. Is this your boy, sister-in-law? This is Davy. Generally speaking, I don't like boys. How do you do, boy? Fine, thank you, Mum. And I hope you are the same. Fair. Lux Manor. Brother. Sister? My dear, I'm come here to relieve you of all the trouble I can. You're much too pretty and thoughtless to have any duties imposed upon you that can be undertaken by me. Give me your keys, my dear. in my own house. In my own house? Claire! Our own house, I mean. It's very hard that I may not have a word to say about domestic matters. I'm sure I managed very well before we were married. Edward, let there be an end of it. I go tomorrow. Jane Murdstone, sit down and be silent. I'm sure I don't want anybody to go. I don't ask much, only to be consulted sometimes. Edward, I... Jane Murdstone, will you be silent? Clara, you stunned me. When Jane Murdstone is kind enough to assume, for my sake, something like the condition of a housekeeper's. And when she meets with a base return. No, don't say that, my love. This is not a fit scene for the boy. David, go to bed. But, sir! To bed, I say! Dave. 
stillness seems to reign through the whole house. It grew dark, the night wore on, and nobody came near me. Fearful questions tortured me. Was it a criminal act that I'd committed? Would I be sent to prison? Would I be hanged? you, Peggy. Soft as a mouse, or the cattle hear us. Is Mama very angry with me? No, not very. But what's to be done with me? Or you'll come. 
to a bad end. Drive on. I'll never forget you. And I'll take as much care of your ma as I ever took of you, and I will never leave her. Is she a good cook? Peggy teach me. Perhaps you might be writing to her. I'll certainly be writing to her. Ah, well. She was writing to her. Perhaps you recollect to say that. I really love Barkus. Barkis. <laughs> yeah. I like the way he says Barkus is willing. Yes. It is it is what is known as ellipsis because he doesn't complete the sentence. So it is a term called ellipsis, sentence of incomplete predication. Exactly, yes. Bike is a willing what? Is willing to marry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very, very interesting thing. I think tomorrow we will have a discussion on this. And yes. also how Dickens shows the cruelty of the education system in 19th century England. Mr. Uh, Murdstone sends him to a to Mr. Crooker's school, which is another center for cruelty. So we shall meet tomorrow again, Bata, and we look forward to interacting with you. Ma'am, yes. there is one little question from Dr. Poonam Nigam. Can you show your face, Poonam? Poonam, please come on screen. Dr. Poonam Nigam, are you there? Are you there? What is the question? Just see from the chat box. I think she wants the uh, link of the movie that Professor Bhatta is showing to us. Yes. Uh, perhaps I will send it to you and you distribute to the others uh, by the, the chat, the, the WhatsApp. I'll send yes, you the link of the movie so you can watch at home and, and little by little and perhaps you, you pause in, in one part you don't understand and you listen to it again. Yes. And another person says here that um, Dickens is autobiographical, but it's similar to his life, but not equal. Uh, because uh, David um, Dickens had his father was not was not um, orphan as David. Yeah, it is semi, semi autobiographical. It's not autobiographical. It is semi in the sense that Dickens went to a blacking factory. 
Yes. Uh, he suffered a lot in his life, Dickens, and he wanted to put David in his feet, in his shoes, because David also suffered a lot, but David was orphan and Dickens had a father. This is the difference. And perhaps um, Mr. Makova is like a father, but he's not his father. And Mr. Makova goes to jail because of that. And his father, Dickens' father, also goes to jail because of that. Well, um, I don't know if there is another question or we can leave it here and continue tomorrow. Tomorrow we will meet. Thank you, ma'am. Good well. night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good and night. tomorrow we hope to stay together. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye, Bata. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Namaste. Thank you, madam. Namaste. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Um, Jeshri, ma'am. Yes. Evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, mm -hmm. if you allow me, can I have Deepa ma'am's uh, report so that I could be guided how to write the report? No. <laughs> you write in your free uh, expression whatever you have felt. Ma'am, I just need yes, a I was her. just reading. I was just speaking in the beginning briefly about each author. So you need to just speak, uh, write something about the author or the speaker, whosoever. Okay, I'll do that. I was thinking about the forward because I have so starting starting you just look from the brochure that for in okay. with what reference you have uh, right you are being given this assignment to write report okay ma'am yeah, that's from the brochure okay thank you ma'am good night ma'am good night <laughs>